we are back in module four today with video 4C. This is the second half of module four and it's starting on page 115 and we'll get to about page 120. So we were talking about chemical changes versus physical changes. As a review, a chemical change is when the molecules within a substance change into different molecules. So the molecules are actually rearranging themselves. The same atoms are going to be present before and after a chemical change, and that is because of the law of mass conservation. We cannot change or destroy matter or create new types of matter, but we can rearrange them. So the atoms where they were rearranged like this over here, after the chemical change, they're gonna be arranged in a new molecule, or maybe they may be on their own where they were in a molecule before, like in the case of decomposition. So that's a chemical change. For example, carbon combined with oxygen makes carbon dioxide. Now the way that we would write this would be in a chemical equation because we know that chemists like to save time in how they write things down, right? So we would write this using the chemical symbol C for carbon, we add a plus sign, um, which would mean combined with. We would add an O, the chemical symbol for oxygen. O is actually always going to be present as O2, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then makes is written with an arrow, which actually, when you read this, as a chemist, which you all are, uh, you're gonna say yields, okay? So we have carbon plus oxygen, or O2, yields. And then the new molecule, the new way that these atoms are arranged is as CO2. And that's an example of a chemical equation. Now, we wanna write down some names for these things. These over here, on the left are called the reactants. They are the things that are reacting together. The reactants are the substances that exist before the chemical change occurs. Substances that exist before the chemical change occurs. And the reactants are always written on the left. Okay, so carbon and oxygen are our two reactants. Now, on the other side of the equation, we'll write in green, these are the products. In this case, there's only one product, carbon dioxide. P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S. In case you needed help spelling the word products. Just kidding, I know that you don't. Products, substances, these are the substances that are produced by the chemical change. Products are the substances produced by the chemical change. And these are always written on the right. Okay, so here's our first example of a chemical equation. Reactants yield products. Something more for you to memorize. I know you love it when I say that. You need to memorize what we call the homonuclear diatomics, okay? These are molecules that are made of two atoms of the same type. So if you think about the name, homo would mean two. Nuclear has to do with the nucleus of the atom, what's inside the atom, which we haven't even talked about that yet. But you may have heard in different classes, that's where um, the type of atom is really determined in the nucleus. So we have the same type of nucleus, and di, of course, means two, because you have learned that prefix, atomics, two of the same type of atom. So these are the examples 
of the molecules. Uh, actually, we're going to write down that these are elements that exist. Elements that exist as homonuclear diatomics, meaning there's always two of them. These are elements that exist as homonuclear diatomics instead of individual atoms. Instead of individual atoms. Okay? So, for example, in that last chemical equation that we saw, our two reactants were carbon and oxygen. Now, carbon can exist as a single atom. You could find that in nature, um, or a group of single atoms. But oxygen is never just one atom of oxygen. It always likes to join together with another atom of oxygen. You can think of them as little twinsies, okay? So whenever you're about to write an O, or an H, or an N, or an F, or a CL, or a BR, or an I, or an AT, it's always gonna be part of a molecule. Okay, either it's combined with another element, which is fine, or instead of just being by itself, you're gonna put a little subscript too because it likes to be a little twinsy. Okay? Uh, so those are the homonuclear diatomics. Like I said, you have to memorize which ones they are, but you are going to love this. It's gonna make you fall in love with the periodic table just a little bit more. Uh, these are actually found in an L on the periodic table. So let me give you that in your notes here a minute. I'll write just that they're in an L on the periodic table. Excuse me, the beloved periodic table. And I will show you what I mean. Here is the periodic table. You're gonna have to be looking at your own because I know that this is too small for you to see. But as you will see, if you are following down uh, my rows here, I wrote them vertically. Don't ask me why I wrote them vertically instead of across, but whatever. So starting with H, now H is the exception because we love to have exceptions. H is just kind of floating out here by itself, way up here on top. But after that, we have N, O, F. Find them on your periodic table. N, O, F, they go across. And then once you get to F, you just go straight down. So it's kind of like an upside down backwards L, I guess I should say. So we have N, O, F, and then we have C, L, B, R, I, and A, T. So if you can at least memorize where they are on the periodic table, and you know that there are eight of them, then you'll always be able to have a periodic table in front of you for a test or homework or something. You can easily know which elements are always going to exist as a pair and not just individually. The homonuclear diatomics.